Welcome back to Golf in America. On a small island between the two forks of Long Island, Bob DiStefano has spent the last 48 years making sure no child was turned away. As John Feinstein reports, this head professional has changed the lives of two generations of young golfers, one swing at a time. It is a Wednesday morning in July at Gardner's Bay Country Club, and Bob DiStefano is doing what he has done on every summer Wednesday since 1962. He's teaching. Kids, they're gonna keep the good swings. Who has a good swing? His pupils are all kids. At the age of 70, Bob DiStefano is teaching the same things he taught at the age of 22, how to swing a golf club properly. Okay, have some fun now. Let's eat up. The rules of the game and the etiquette of the game. The kids have to behave in a certain way. The kids have to stay where they don't interfere with the adult members. Some will go on to become excellent players. Some good players, others no better than mediocre. But they will all share two things, a love and respect for golf and for the pro who taught them. He's such a perfect uh, example of how somebody can affect so many people in such a good way. My goal has always been to get them to play the game. Thanks to Gardner's Bay Country Club, they have allowed us to do that, and they've had the tee at 1.30 for 50 years. When Bob DiStefano first came to Shelter Island, he thought Gardner's Bay was a good place to launch a career as a head pro. Right from the beginning, DiStefano was determined to have a thriving junior program, and he wanted to be sure every kid on Shelter Island, not just the members' children at Gardner's Bay, would have a chance to learn the game. So he convinced the club to allow anyone on the island into his junior program. The cost back then was $10 a summer. We made sure golf was very inexpensive for everybody on Shelter Island to be able to attend the program. Almost everyone who has ever come through the program still refers to himself as one of Bob's juniors. The program has produced many, many excellent players. 32 of the last 40 Gardner's Bay Club Championships have been won by Bob's juniors, and players like 14-time club champion Jay Sessa, Gary Blatos, who's played in three U.S. amateurs, and Rick Southwick have all produced superb golf through the years. In 1991, Southwick advanced to the quarterfinals of the U.S. amateur, beating an Arizona State junior named Phil Mickelson in the round of 16. So I called Bob before I actually played. I said, Bob, you know, I'm playing this other, this, this guy next round, it's, called, it's like Phil Michelson, or, you know, obviously making a joke knowing who, full well who he was. And he goes, Bob's immediate reaction was, oh boy. DiStefano's influence on his juniors goes well beyond the golf course. Many who are now adults are in constant contact with him. I called it the DiStefano fraternity because just as I still have dozens of close friends from the program, I'm also friends with my kids' friends. Those in trouble know that the first person there to help will be Bob. Ray Evangelista was one of Bob's first juniors, joining the program in 1966. Two of his children have been through the program. A third is part of it now. 17 years ago, Ray lost the use of his legs in a car accident. There was nothing outside his children that Ray loved more than golf. Stefano made sure his golf career would not end. I tell them there, they've got this game all wrong. They've got too many arms and legs. <laughs> it's confusing. When you had your accident, one of the things that kept you going was the idea to play golf again. You're gonna make me cry, John. <laughs> Bob uh, held a raffle called the Ray Will Play. They wanted to buy me a golf cart. They virtually sold out. And that got you in the cart and got you playing? Bob did that. Ray Will Play. Yeah. Yep. And we had no problem selling those chances. And that's all because of Bob. He just, you know, he asked for it and the members supported him totally. I learned the game from Bob as a teenager. Like Ray, I'm one of Bob's juniors. My brother Bobby learned from Bob and worked for Bob and now both his sons are in the program. Now, what's great is the older juniors, like myself, when they can, they'll come and they'll help out on Wednesdays and help with the junior lessons. My son Danny, who's 16, was one of Bob's juniors. Now, my daughter Bridget is one of them too. Lovely, Bridget. There was one member of Bob's first class back in 1962 he was especially proud of, Patty Conway. She grew up to be a golf pro, a very good player who came home to Shelter Island to become Bob's assistant in 1985. Like Bob, she loved nothing more than teaching kids. Last fall, Patty died of lung cancer. Her loss is still deeply felt by everyone in the program, from Bob to the kids who grew up with Patty, 
to the kids Patty taught alongside Bob. Patty passed away last fall. Tremendous, tremendous loss for me. Nobody loved golf more than Pat Conway, and nobody loved junior golf better than Pat Conway. Next summer will be Bob's 50th at Gardner's Bay. According to the PGA of America, no pro has worked at the same club for 50 straight years. Even at 70, Bob's energy, especially on Wednesday mornings, hasn't waned even a little bit. Have you ever missed a Wednesday? Never. Never missed a Wednesday. That's Lou Gehrig or Cal Ripken. Never had a day that I didn't want to go to work. So he's always willing to do anything for the juniors. Junior golf is Bob. I think junior golf will go on. It seems that junior golf has become the legacy. In the final scene of It's a Wonderful Life, Harry Bailey proposes a toast. To my brother George, he says, the richest man in town. He's referring, of course, not to money, but to love and friendship. Clearly, the same can be said of Bob DiStefano. <laughs> it's remarkable to see 48 years of positive influence that Bob continues to have on the members of his community. Coming up on Golf in